Okay, boys, round 23. Here it comes. Team's Day. We've got the full squad to pick from tonight. Jared Cronin, Isaac Soss, Moneta Soss, and Daniel Farakura. As we look into our, our Warriors team to take on the Dolphins. Over nah, who cares? Now. Jesus, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. <laughs> it ain't over till it's over. <laughs> Maybe it's okay, over. Lenny. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. The great words of the. I don't uh, think it the... to mean end of a road. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> um, he's, he's, very, he's very quiet tonight. Uh, <clears throat> oh, that's right. Like... All right, boys. Let's have a look at the, uh, the teams to take on. Well, first of all. The team taking on our team, and that is the, the Dolph Lundgrens taking on the Warriors, <laughs> round 23. You think Wayne Bennett's going to start in the midfield? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> and now our Waz. Uh, we're starting with Chance here at the back. Chance in charge. Never that. Fullback spots to the left. To the left. Never lets you down. Never lets you down. That's right. 300 uh, metres, please. Uh, someone who maybe perhaps did let some things down on Friday night. Uh, DWZ. Come on, my team is it is now. For a bit of a bounce back, hopefully, uh, as is probably Ali Leatawa, Ali 2.0. Mm. Mm. Um, bit of a yeah, mixed, mixed sort of bag, I guess. Um, yeah. yeah, you'd probably say. Uh, into the centre spot is uh, Rog. Roger's back. He just flirted with the wing for a little bit, and now we've uh, we've moved him back. One Mr. slot inside. It. So, okay. Uh, alongside him, the Cossie of Living is biting again. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Interesting on that one. It's a, not a, not an injury enforced change. So uh, into the halves, Chanel number six uh, retains a spot. <laughs> May take over the goal kicking this week, perhaps. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, and oh, the new guy. <laughs> oh, I guess the farewell tour starts now, I suppose. Oh, Shawnee. Um, yeah. Anyway, I touched him. I touched him. <laughs> <laughs> that changed everything. Into the forwards, uh, AFB, Adam Fenor Black. Uh, his, his farewell Definitely. tour. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> w half, uh, Wade Egan. <laughs> Magneto. I don't know if anyone's touched him, but uh, the captain for this one oh. is uh, Michaele Panetti. He's been claimed by Tor Samo. So, um, someone mentioned last week that I didn't mispronounce his name. It should be a Māori name. So. Uh, anyways, uh, into the second row. Uh, Marata Nikore. Kuna Marata. Uh, maybe, maybe we're unlucky with uh, one of the knock-ons last week, I, I felt. Anyways. Mm. Uh, alongside him uh, in the second row is Kate Kirkwell. He's, uh, he's doing well. He's, yeah, showing a bit of juice. So, uh, we like that. Uh, and the number 13 is uh, the glutes. The glutes are sticking around. The glutes, the glutes are going to stay. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll chat about that a bit more as well. Um, he's staying. That's it. Onto the bench. I'm on a wave. Freddy. Freddy oh, wow. He did. He did, actually. Yeah, he showed a bit of, showed a bit of spring. Uh, number 15 is Isaac. Here you go, bro. No, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> Somebody else. <laughs> I don't want to dance with Tamale. <laughs> I don't want to dance, dance with Tamale no more. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz has got his farewell tour coming up as well. Oh, yo, yo. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, not farewelling. Uh, Leka Hasima. Um, he's, he's on the, uh, the, the inward float, I guess. So. Give him the ball. I'm <laughs> saying, give him the ball. 18th <laughs> man, uh, looking to pop the collar once again, is uh, Tamale Martin. So. Interesting change that one from, uh, from last week. And the head coach, of course, is uh, good old Webby. Poor old Webby. Oh, now he's feeling but Probably <laughs> like the rest of us, bloody hell. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Boy. Uh, but boys, uh, I guess the big, the big, big topic before we get into anything uh, is the Sean Johnson retirement. Now, we're starting with you, Buddha, because uh, let, me, let me just do a quick recap for those who don't know. Um, here was the, the flow of events. Uh, you, you went to uh, watch uh, the Super Netball game and you, you saw Sean Johnson and you called out to him. Well, 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 first of all, but yeah, it was ANZ. 
premiership grand final. And um, I was uh, playing head ups with my boy. And as he, as I looked up uh, and one Sean Johnson came around the corner. Um, so I didn't have time to kind of be, you know, cool, calm and collected. You know? <laughs> I didn't have distance to kind of, you know, and the inner fangirl came out. Um, I looked up. And even my son was like, Dad, it's Shawnee. And I was like, hey, Shawnee, oh. you the man, bro. Touched his shoulder and then said, up the pulse. <laughs> and uh, he gave me the... <laughs> wow. uh, and walked on through. And I was like, <laughs> smooth. <laughs> smooth. Oh, and then within 24 and hours, t- he was retiring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Maybe retiring from the creep that was following him around. Because <laughs> <laughs> then I was in the line to get the fries. I was, in the <laughs> line. I was playing it more cool, you know, like that's Sean Johnson, but I know. That's Sean I know. I know you... you know that I know that you know that I'm here. <laughs> Were you, were you like hiding behind the program or something and then being like, oh. <laughs> He was a few rows down as well in the mystic zone, so I was like, he's down, he's down. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, oh boy. Um, yeah, I guess it, it does uh, does impact a lot. He's uh, he's playing this week. Uh, but Isaac, what do you make of, um, you know, of, of Sean's, I guess, uh, decision to uh, to say farewell at the end of the year oh i guess this is his farewell tour for these last four games but maybe he'll be like the rolling stones and have a farewell tour every two or three years or something like that just keep coming back keep coming back you know that's kind of what i'm hoping for he decides to go another round but it's pretty much done and dusted i mean everything the writing was on the wall with the whole podcast of his what was it play on or whatever um he's setting himself up for the next phase of his life but yeah still in shock i'm I'm quietly gutted that he's uh, decided to call it a day. Um, Moneta, I, I don't know about you, but when I saw him run out on Friday night, the camera panned to Sean, he was looking around the crowd and smiling. And, that. and you know, having thought about the podcast that he's doing and stuff and the timing of it and just how he was looking around and, you know, kind of the look in his face, I was like, ooh, 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 ooh. What, what, what were you thinking? Uh during the uh, or before the match and during, I actually wasn't as observant as you, <laughs> but um, yeah, like, like like you alluded to, like what Isaac alluded to, he, he's taken a number of steps to towards like life after footy, from the sounds of it, and um, you know, like the number of injuries that he's been getting and and so forth, and he's always talked about his love for his daughters and stuff like that and wanted to be there for them. And so um, I probably wasn't as surprised about his retirement, but probably surprised at the timing. Um, but yeah, yeah. But he's he's been a legend. And um, if only if he didn't get these injuries, you know, he, and you can see what he can do when he, has, when he, when he isn't injured. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a hard one with a player of that sort of magnitude. Uh, stepping back um, definitely affects a lot of people in a lot of different ways. Um, it's been a lot of, I mean, know, like, a lot you know, of, lot of chat around. Asia, you know, the only, you know, he's um, half Laos, you know, half, you know, Pakeha. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm always going to root for another Southeast Asian brother. But uh, yeah, wish I, was a... there, wish I was there to touch him though. But that's <laughs> It was the touch <laughs> that changed <Yes>. everything. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. All right. Well, I guess um, the big question for this week, uh, Daniel, have we got the team to bounce back from an absolute abomination uh, against the Eels? Yeah. Before I sort of touch on that, I think with the Shawnee thing, just wanted to add the fact that, you know, he mentioned this uh, this period of the season being hard the late injury layoff as well and the fact that you know mentioned on his podcast that you know not able to walk down the stairs properly as well and you got to come to a point um i think you put into into account that 
we're not going with that well, you know, and I think we're, I'd hate to say it, guys, not, I am say a dreaded rebuild, but there is a, a build phase now. And we probably all knew that with the, the age of our squad too. So if you think pulling yourself off the canvas, uh, going another season, um, and maybe when you, you just can't hit the, the heights that you used to. Um, yeah, as much as we would want him to go around again, it, he's probably got to think about what's best for him as well. And, you know, what's best for the club in two to three years' time as well, if he's occupying that space. But I still think he's, yeah, our best playmaker. Um, and how do we pull ourselves off the canvas? Oh, fuck, I don't know. Like, <laughs> it, it's just one of these things where you look at all the stats in the game and, you know, we, we dominated in a lot of areas, you know, the traditional stats. But I just got got me thinking in the last 10 minutes when we did, it's like, I just feel like we're not playing any footy. You know, it's just too mm. laboured and too structured. And yeah. and the game's gone. Like, that was that was last year. You know, we know that. We just made, you know, we ground teams down. They made mistakes. Now, um, you can kind of do that. Like, you were trying to pin them, and then they just get away. Um, and they were just playing footy. And, you know, and it just comes down to, you know, one-on-one tackle misses and playing a bit of football. And we also just, I don't think we could have scored in the first 70 minutes. We couldn't score tries. We had to be within like the twenty meter line, you know, to set up some shape plays where, you know, the uh, the eels were just, you know, the Gutho was just running it. Uh, Dylan Brown was just getting it out wide, you know, um, and it wasn't until that, you know, maybe they dropped off because they were up by so much, but we actually threw the ball around. Um, we chanced it a little bit, and I know that's, you know, old warriors, right? We just never know what turned up, and we threw the ball around, but. I don't know, there's just something in the fact that when we just played some footy, you know, we chanced it a little bit more. We were just a bit more damaging. So, yeah, I don't know. Is it throw a bit more caution to the wind, see what happens? But um, what we our current game plan is, is just not is not achieving the result. You're, um, you're reminding me of your frequent mentions of the phrase ground and pound. And it's it's like we've, we've got the ground part. We ain't pounding, so... I just don't think you can pound that much now, you know. Like you can keep pounding and pounding and pounding and pounding. No, no. I, I even I don't even think like the um, like the Panthers are doing that as effective, right? Mm. Like I just don't know. I think you know. I've just been thinking about it a lot. Maybe I look at like at the Titans, right? They just physically, they got and but they're physically man to man. They've got some freaks, you know, some pretty pretty elite, you know, physical specimens out there as well. And there's just a little, so yeah, they. Yeah. yeah, and I think there's just it's hard to contain teams. I think mm. that's probably the thing where we were able to contain teams uh, last year and that sort of footy. You know, like the dragons of the world, they used to just beat themselves up. You know, mm. now they don't. You know, they. You know, so the level's good, but yeah, that we've been calling for the pounding, eh? Oh yeah, and the grounding <laughs> just hasn't happened. <laughs> Isaac, uh, what's your thoughts, bro? Um, a lot of people are talking about the the scheme. The scheme that we're playing within um is is it the scheme that's not helping us or is it the execution of it it's 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 really both i think you know dan's right that game plan is is so so last year it, it really is you know it's so last year but it is i mean at the start of the season they tried to play apply the same game plan and there were cracks showing already i thought um, there was no evolution of the game plan from last year. I mean, I guess probably the biggest uh, difference between how they executed it last year is the time was was perfect on their attacking execution, you know, with DWZ scoring all those tries out on his side of the field. That was just purely down to execution and skill and timing. That That was wavering at the start of this year. And I feel like the ground and pound game didn't, didn't sort of gravitate towards us being able to um, be, be a, being able to execute that sort of game plan that we had last year in terms of attack. Um, but there was times in the season when it was, it was clearly obvious to me that they just need to switch things up or maybe just try something different, but they wouldn't. And they just stuck to their guns. And I think we're kind of seeing the result of that this year. 
I mean, it's like the Broncos. They've kind of been found out. Their game plan, I mean, they've had injuries and whatnot, but their game plan's been found out this year too. So maybe Dan's right. Teams are evolving um, and they're playing the game different. And Gold Coast are probably probably a good example of that, you know, the way that they play. Um, and unfortunately, the Warriors haven't taken a cue from that. And um, hopefully next year, they might go back to the drawing board and try and take the best out of the game plans that they've had in the past couple of years and maybe, yeah, evolve it, grow it, maybe take a different parts from other teams and see how it fits in with theirs. But something needs to change. And hopefully this week, yeah, they throw caution to the wind and they just play some footy. Mm. It has been, um, it's been a tough little period for the team. Absolutely. Uh, and they've made a few decisions about it. I'm interested in the fact that they've brought Kossian on the wing and they've they basically dropped um, Grand Dolphin after last week. He had a, had a rough night, let's be fair. But um, uh, Moneta, bro, first of all, uh, was that the right is that the right decision to bring in Kossi and get MGT out? It's a hard one. Um, you kind of allude to it. Um, and, you know, when announcing the team days, you know, it can be quite costly at times. Um regarding his plays, you know, and his read of defense and just some basic, um, you know, plays. But um, only time will tell, really. But, um, you know, just thinking back what what Saucy said, you know, um, you know, there, there has been, you know, we, we have been hit hard by injuries. Like, like this entire season, I don't think I can remember any other season where, um, you know, injuries have, has played a factor. And we haven't been able to play quite a, we haven't played, you know, a consistent team every every week so um, it's been quite tough but um, I also think I'm not quite sure if the RTS experiment has worked um, I'll just be blunt about that um, I I know we're trying to keep him on the field and find a place for him but I've actually come to the conclusion that number one is probably the, his best position um, so I think there's a bit of thinking um, for next year and how they want to evolve and uh, how they use their plays, and like Isaac said, um, how they want to structure their kind of plays uh, moving forward. Um, because, yeah, this season just hasn't quite um, worked out the same way. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it's it's going to be yeah. I think the next few weeks are going to be a real challenge, even just to to watch. I think from our perspective, um, <laughs> Daniel, what's what's the keys to victory against the Dolphins? And do you think we'll get the job done dolphins aren't necessarily traveling super well eh? so you know they've had their challenges their skids um they've been pretty competitive right? though they can score but they can concede as well so yeah, it's just hard to call you know um and i don't know like, it's always one of those things where there's been so many games where we should go in um as easy favorites and we haven't been able to in the games that we you know would be hard tussles we've actually played pretty well and, and maybe have lost and we should have yeah. won so yeah it's i mean one benefit will be it will be warm they'll be in brizzy they'll have a second home crowd as well because you know there'll be uh the wires whanau there that you know they like playing at suncorp it was pretty awesome last time they were there too so yeah it's, it's hard to say um and i think it's just a bit temperamental they go week to week i just feel like it's been you know, every big loss, the Titans lost, da 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 da. You know, you go through soul searching and get a response, and they just keep going through that cycle. So, if a SJ announcement that he's going can't can't fire up the troops, then yeah, I'm not sure what will. Yeah. But um, it, yeah, nice to be away actually. If anything, get out of the bubble <laughs> that is Aotearoa. Mm, absolutely. Well, uh, yeah, it's all on, I guess. Uh, this coming Sunday, um, big game. Uh, we're going to have, uh, well, first of all, we're going to have our, our weekly podcast. going to be following the uh, the Teams Day episode pretty soon because uh, we're a little bit late on that. So uh, that's to follow. I've also got the highlights coming up from the Jersey Flag Cup team. Had a, a good game uh, on the weekend. Uh, and, of course, uh, we'll be back um, next week to, to wrap up the uh, the Dolphins game. See, just to see how things went and who might have decided to leave or retire next week. I don't know. <laughs> Far out. Uh, anyways, uh, Jared Cronin on behalf of Moneta Sauce, Isaac Sauce, and Daniel Farakura. This has been Team's Day. We'll catch you shortly. Like and subscribe. Peace. Peace.